Hello! Welcome to Book and Bujo. I'm Debbie and I am so glad that you have joined me today. So this year was my 27th wedding anniversary to my amazing husband and I wanted to share some footage of us going to our favorite place and that is Superstition Meadery. And Superstition Meadery is amazing. They have the most awesome flavors and you can go in and you can choose your own flight which is one of the things we do during happy hour they actually have half off a glass so that's when we go in if we can make it to the happy hour we go in and we pick our favorites that are a little pricey <laughs> and we get half off a glass so they have some that are 24 to 30 dollars a glass and so if we can get them for 12 to 15 dollars then that is a wonderful treat and otherwise we go in and we build our own flight so we get anywhere from 2 to 12 different uh, tastings little samples of a bunch of their new flavors and add a couple of our favorites in there and then we share that and we get to try some new things and find some new favorites so it is a great place so if you're ever in Arizona they have a location in Prescott they also have a dine-in restaurant in Phoenix so look them up if you're ever in town My husband and I also went hiking with Walter, our wonderful pit bull, and we had a lot of fun. There's some amazing hiking in our area as well. So Today I have another little mini haul. I was bad and I got some more stationery. Uh, yeah, so I thought I would give you a little peek into what I got. I am now on um, a kind of a, a little bit of a stationery band through the end of the year and hopefully we'll be able to just put everything on my Christmas list. <laughs> so Archer and Olive having a sale of course and they had like a mystery notebook that you could get for a very reduced price and they also had the reading journal I wanted to get because I needed to get a reading journal for next year and they had an A5 notebook that I just was in love with so let's take a peek and see what I got of course lots of air pillows I'm gonna save this one for the end. That's the mystery notebook. I'm gonna hide that. Oh yes, I also forgot that I got that. Okay, let me just pull everything out of here really quick. We'll start with the thing I forgot about. <laughs> so here's this one. Their boxes are so beautiful, I love them. But this is the pastel notepad. So I really like their notepads. They are great on my desk if I need to jot down a quick note, if I need a tip-in for my bullet journal or anything like that, need like a little header that's a different color or all those fun things. And I should have brought my knife over. Hold that up. Exacto knife. Much easier. <laughs> Let's get a couple of these sides open. And then put the cover back on for safety. All right, so I'm very excited for this one. And I believe I got the A5 
size. Yeah. Super fun. So we've got a lot of the pretty pastel colors in green and yellow and pink and purple and blue. So fun. I'm very excited with this. I think this would be helpful in the blackout journals as well. So if you want some spaces that you want to actually be able to do some more writing or things like that, where you can use some brush pens and other gel pens that don't work on the blackout paper, this could come in handy for that. Oh, I also want to show you what I did. So in my favorites video about notebooks, my favorite things video that I did from my stationery. I had talked about the notepad that I had previously from Archer and Olive, which is now pretty much empty. Uh, it, this one was the original A5 size where the whole thing was A5 and now they have it so the paper itself is A5. So the notebook, so the A5 size doesn't include this portion of it anymore so you actually once you perforate it then that's where it is where this one the entire thing including this was a5 so this these pages were a little bit smaller so i took some of the extra pages that i had from this one and i took those out and i loosened these and i added it to these ones so you can see the size difference here this is the original notepad that they first came out with and then these are the later ones that they came out with that are just a little bit bigger and this one has the craft paper the dark blue and then the dark green in it so now I have some darker colors and some lighter colors very excited so yeah super easy you just unscrew these you can pop this whole thing out and then pull out the ones you want to put in the other one and then recycle this and I'd actually forgotten that I got that one. <laughs> okay, and then the next one I got, I ended up getting a B5 because I just wanted to try it out. I haven't tried the B5 before in the dot notebooks. I have it in my lined journal, but not in a dot grid one. So I wanted to try that out and see what I thought. And these new, I love the new boxing boxes that they have where the, the old ones, the lid lifts all the way off. Where the new ones, it's almost like a book and they slide out. <laughs> it's kind of tight. Okay, there we go. So they slide out almost like a drawer. And so it leaves you with beautiful edges on the journal on the box itself on the case where these ones aren't too bad either because they have the leaves on the covers but the notebook here we go this one is the beautiful one with the skulls and the books and this one i'm still trying to decide if i want to use it as my reading journal or my bullet journal haven't decided yet but it is beautiful so I have noticed on a couple other people mention it that on the a5 size so the smaller size this icon is really well proportioned but on some of these bigger ones it seems a little small so it would be nice if they made it just a little bit bigger um, or proportionate to the size of the notebook itself so have the icon always um, assert like 5% of the notebook or whatever the percentage would be and so if you have an A5 notebook it's still the same takes up the same amount of space on the front of the cover as it does on a B5 and beautiful holographic silver sprayed edges I love it the pen loop and the band and this one I did oh even that is shiny oh yeah it's awesome so nice nameplate page we have normal white dot grid getting some shadows there sorry and then of course pocket at the back again I don't really care about the pocket but a lot of people do like that so so I'm very excited to give this one a try and I feel like so of course you have the little ampersand charm on the bottom but I feel like these like the notebooks already been broken in for me 
usually there's a lot more to do in these where you go over a couple pages you open it up you kind of flatten it out you do a couple more pages and I feel like this one isn't quite so needy in that area which is kind of nice all right I love this one okay and uh before I decided to do that one I actually really wanted a square another square notebook for my reading journal because I loved that size. I feel like it worked really well for my spreads and TBR Obli and keeping track of that and everything in my reading journal. And so I wanted to go with that again. Oh, got a little denty crease in my lid. Not a big deal though. It doesn't bother me too much. So the sides again, it is nice to have something nice instead of just plain white. Uh, but this is a dot grid notebook. It's the white pages again, 160 GSM page paper for both. Oh. Archer and Olive creates mental wellness creativity tools and experiences that foster connection connections through your own artistic expression. They have a whole little thing on the inside. Share your creative journey with us, Archer and Olive at Archer and Olive, hashtag creative wellness, archerandolive.com. And then share this code with a loved one so they can get 10% off. Use share the love 10 for new customers only, not returning customers, just new customers. That's kind of fun. So, and then this one, I do like the colors. Okay, it's a little bright for me. I'm not a huge fan of that kind of Kelly green color. This is a little darker than that, but I do really like the icon on this one. It's the book stack with the candle. I just had to do it. I had to get it. And this is, okay, so this one, they both are. They're both uh, vegan leather. I actually, these are easier to keep clean, but I think I actually prefer the linen for the feel of it, but these are a lot easier to keep clean. It would be kind of nice. I think they're starting to do this with some of the newer notebooks, but it would be nice to have the little icon on the side here too, in case you put these on your shelf this way, not in the case you have something pretty to look at. Yeah. Okay. So again, pen loop, got the band and I like that the band is the same color. Again, your nameplate page, it's the dot grids, which it's, I know it's really hard to see in here. <laughs> My lighting is terrible right now. The sun's going down and yeah. And of course the pocket in the back and it's the eight by eight dot grid. Okay, so we have the eight by eight square. We have the B5. So that gives you a little, so this one's that much taller, but the square one is probably that almost that same amount wider on this side so it gives you a little example of the sizing and then the a5 size so it's the same height so they're it's as the square so they're both the eight tall but again it's even that much shorter this way so if you ignore that green part <laughs> it's just that black there and then against the B5 size, it's about the same. It's a little bit shorter this direction and quite a bit shorter this direction. All right, so that's my quick little haul from Archer and Olive. I got my B5 notebook, my A5 notepad, and my square dot grid as well. And don't forget, if you are a new customer, share the love 10 and you can get 10% off your own notebooks at Archer and Olive. You can also check out their other accessories and pens. They have acrylographs, which are the acrylic paint pens. They have calligraphs, which are their brush pens. They have um, really great gel pens that work really nice. And they have a whole lot of other amazing things. Check out their blog. They are a great company all about wellness and creativity for everybody. So hopefully I won't have another stationary haul until Christmas time <laughs> until after Christmas and I will save my money until then. <laughs> what size is your favorite notebook? Do you, can you resist a sale on stationery when you see one? <laughs>
<laughs> what is your uh, must buy items? Mine definitely journals. Second to that, probably pens. I love pens. Pens might be first, journal second. I don't know. It's a toss up. If you have pens, you need journals to write in. If you have a journal, you need a pen to write in it. Mm. What do you think? Journal or pen? Or is it like the chicken and the egg? You have to have both. So let me down, know down in the comments what's your favorite journals or pens and leave either a notebook or a pen emoji in the comments if you don't want to have a discussion and you just want to leave a little image of what you like best. And so when I was going through my footage of my Archer and Olive unboxing, I realized that one of the videos for some reason wouldn't download. So <laughs> here we go again. <laughs> and that was the mystery box from the Archer and Olive box. This is uh, or the mystery notebook. This is the whole reason I ended up getting the box <laughs> with the notebooks and stuff. Uh, I mean, I need another notebook too, but I wanted to find out what the mystery was all about. So this is what I got. Let's check it out. Ooh, I can get it open. There we go. Oh, super cute. So I believe this is part of their garden themed notebooks. And so you have your little sun hat and garden gloves there. Super cute. And I also believe this is, I believe this might be the A6 size notebook. I'm not quite sure. And it doesn't say on here what size it is. Oh, it does. It's right up here. So this is a B6. So this one is the B6 size of the notebooks and let me grab my A5 so you can see what the difference is between them. Okay, so this is my current A5 notebook and this one is the B6. So it's just a little bit shorter, maybe about half an inch to an inch on this side. And then it's an inch, inch and a half or so taller. The A5 is taller. so. It's a nice little compact size. I'm not quite sure what I'm going to use this for yet, but it's kind of fun. I may use this maybe for my yearly collections journal in the future. Maybe an R&D journal, some practice. Not sure, but it's very cute. I do like it. It has the ampersand charm and two bookmarks. It's got the band, your pen loop, which is great. A must from me. It has a pocket at the back, which I don't use, so I don't care if it's there or not, but ooh, it's embossed with leaves on the inside, so very pretty and very shiny. <laughs> Look at that. Yes. So nameplate page, and then of course it's the bright white dot grid. This is a great size. I, I'm not a huge fan of the little pocket passport size journals, which are uh, smaller than this one, but I do like this size. So I think the B6 size is the smallest I would really want to go. So B6 to A5 comparison. So a little update. I am getting caught up in my reviews. I think I only have a couple left from August. I'm slowly making a dent into my September and October reviews, and I want to try and get all my September reviews done before I do my September wrap up, but may or may not happen. I think I may just combine September and October and do that in a couple weeks. So stay tuned for that. I've got a lot of fun planned coming up in the future with, of course, getting my new journal set up, figuring out what my planner lineup's going to be, and just checking in to see where I am with all the series and books that I wanted to try to read, how I did with my goals that I said at the beginning of the year, did I actually make any of them uh, or complete any of them? Do my goals even still make sense? Uh, Linden Falls by Joshua Hershey was given to me by the author for an honest review and he signed as well, which was very nice. So thank you so much. I appreciate it. And I did really enjoy it. I gave it four stars. It's very interesting. So let me read you the back. 
Mabel is a rumored witch whose kingdom belongs to Lavian, the serpent. Her people are enslaved in darkness, but everything changes when Mabel discovers a book that transports her to a world of angels and demons. There, she wields swords of fire and faces Tannen, a spirit-infested dragon. Mabel sets off to save her people, unaware that she'll find Eva along the way, the mystic lady thrown away in time, and in doing so, find herself. Mabel even learns how to break the darkness, but Lavian has different plans. Mabel wants to set her people free, make peace with their past, and start a new life. She wants to be a fighter and protector of the ones she loves. When life becomes a curse, can Mabel end the darkness before destroying herself? And this is by Joshua Hershey, and it was really good. I enjoyed it, but there were some issues that I had with the book. So to begin with, let's see. The um, writing and just the the atmosphere and kind of the feel of the book uh, reminded me a little bit of This Present Darkness and Piercing the Darkness by Frank Peretti. And he is one of my favorite Christian authors. And his books are always very interesting. He also has some that run more on the, I guess, horror thriller-ish side. Like um, The Oath and The Prophet or, and The Visitation are a little bit more along those lines. So in this series, the angels are more in the on earth, so they're interacting with humans on earth. Where in this story, <laughs> Mabel gets transported more to the the realm where the angels and the demons themselves live and not necessarily on earth anymore. So, reminiscent of those but not exactly the same. A couple of the issues that I had with this book which didn't detract from my enjoyment because I still gave it four stars, but it, it is something that may affect other readers. So I wanted to give you a heads up. I feel like overall, there's a lot going on in this story. Almost too much for the size that the book is. I feel like it could have been a little bit longer and had a little bit more, I guess, downtime to figure out who people are, what's happening. I feel like you're basically, which, so if you're kind of coming from Mabel's perspective, it makes sense. So Mabel's pretty much just shoved into this world. She's just dropped in and she's, you know, trying to keep her head above water, trying to figure out who all these people are, what's happening. And so you're, it's written that way. So you're kind of in that same boat with Mabel. So you're thrown in, you don't know who anybody is, like all this stuff is happening. You're trying to figure out as you go. And in that aspect, he does a great job doing that. But from the reader's enjoyment side, it can get a little chaotic. And there's some characters that are introduced that it's written in a way that you feel like you should know who this is. And I actually was listening to audiobook and reading it. I actually stopped. I went back to the beginning of the book. I think I was in like chapter nine and I skimmed through trying to figure out, okay, let me find this person's name on the page so I can figure out who this person is. But I didn't, cause I was like, I totally missed something. Who is, who is Eva? Who is this person? Now, of course she is mentioned on the back in the description, but I don't typically read those before I read a book. So yeah, so I went through and I finally found her name and it was only a couple pages before where I was like, wait, who is this? So, she, I, I feel like she wasn't introduced well enough. It's just like all of a sudden here's this new character like, and we feel like you should know who she is already, <laughs> but you don't. So that kind of threw me off a little bit. But it was, And again, it, there's just a lot going on. Again, it didn't really totally detract from my enjoyment to the, uh, for the book because I think it resolved itself well. The, you get to know the characters more as you keep going. So as long as you don't stop and fixate on like, hey, I'm missing something and you just keep going and like, I'll figure it out as I go. As long as you kind of have that mi mindset going in, then you probably wouldn't even notice it. It is also a winner of the Brew Book, Brew Book Excellence Awards. So I definitely would recommend this book. It's uh, got a lot of action to it. It's very fast paced. It's got angels and demons. It's got humans. It's got magic and a whole lot of fun. So check it out. Linden Falls by Joshua Hershey.
So be sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you want to, and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any videos from me. And leave a glass of some sort, a mug, a wine glass, something like that in honor of my anniversary at Superstition Meadery. And until next time, keep reading.